In this video, I'm going to look at a little R script that calculates a, a weighted average. And then I'm going to show that that's an important concept. So it's built into R and they, they're going to call it a weighted, a weighted mean. And then I'm going to show the related idea from physics of center of mass due to uh, sort of center of masses of two molecules. So a little, maybe a little chemistry in there too. Okay. So we have this concept in R of a vector, which is a bunch of sort of related data. And so I imagine that there was some uh, class and that there was uh, homework and labs and uh, three tests and a project, but they're not all weighted the same. The homework's only 5% uh, and the labs are altogether 25%. Each test was 20 and the project was 10%. So we can't just take the grades for all those things and just average them, we need to, to weight the average. So I made a, a vector, so I just called it components. And this little C is for concatenate, and, but it's what we use in R to set up a vector. And that's a little C, that, that's very important, that's a little C. And then here are the, uh, the what I'm gonna call the weights, the 5%, the 25%, the 20. Um, and I've converted them into, you know, decimals from the percents. And then I'll show that you don't really need to do that, um, depending on what you do in R. And then here are the actual uh, scores. Um, let's say that uh, the homework was a 95, the lab was an 88, and the tests were 92, 82, and 86, and that the project was a 93. So the order matters. So there has to be this correct order of the weight and then the scores in the weight. So respecting that order will be important. And if I uh, take the uh, component vector and multiply it by the score vector, that's going to give us the 0.05 times the 95, 0.25 times the 88 and so on. And then I'm going to sum that and that will produce for me the weighted average. So I'm going to run that uh, so far. And so this person's score at this stage is an 8805. So, so again, we had a number of scores and various components. The various components had weights. We multiplied the A score by its corresponding weight and added them up. But this relied on the fact that we made the components, uh, represented them as decimals and made them add up to one. But let me switch over to uh, the components as percentages. And now this is gonna throw it off and be crazy. Now the person's average is 8,805. So that's a nice average, um, but we can fix that if we were to sum up the components and divide by the sum of the components. So you do the multiplication and then divide by the sum, and then we're back to it working again. Because the sum of the components was 100 in this case, and, and that was the same thing that, you know, instead of each one of these was basically divided by 100 to get the the decimal version, but that it neither has to add up to, to, if you adopt this second approach, it, it doesn't have to add up to one or 100, it can add up to anything, um, provided you're dividing by that, uh, the sum of the components. But this is such a common thing, this weighted average. I mean, you know it in, in courses from grade calculations, but it's a, such a common thing all the time in, um, in statistical things that R has it built in. And so they have this thing called weighted mean. And then you take uh, the scores and their weights. So I called it the uh, scores and components. And so now I'm just going to run this, uh, I just called it thing, but it's the weighted.mean that is a, a built in R thing. And then I just, the only thing you have to watch here is to get the this order right that wants the scores and then the weights. 
And if you were typing it, I don't know, I'll say thing two this time. Uh, and I say weighted mean, you see it pop up. So that's one of their words. And then it tells you here X and then W. And if you know that the W is the weight, then you know to put the weight second. So it gives you a little bit of help if you sort of know what's going on. But if you run this uh, code here thing, then you, we see that instead of us uh, saying to multiply and saying to divide by the sum, if it's got, if we use the built-in weighted mean, uh, it knows what to do, provided we get the order right. Okay, so that's this idea of just an example of uh, vectors and multiplying vectors and summing vectors, um, but it's also a very standard thing. So uh, they have one built in. And another time that this uh, calculation appears is in physics and the calculating the center of mass. Um, so you have a bunch of particles and they each have masses and are in different positions, and then you want to find where where something's uh, center is. And so I'm going to talk about molecules. So like uh, like water, I have oxygen and hydrogens. Well, oxygens are a lot more massive than hydrogens, and so we don't weight them the same. They get weighted, and in the case of center of mass, they get the positions get weighted by the masses. And so we're doing just the calculation we just talked about a minute ago. We had a mass times its position and a second mass times its position and that whole calculation. And then we divide it by just the sum of the masses. That's the definition of the center of mass in physics. And then I decided, oh, let's put it to test. First, let's worry about something that is a nice sort of linear lined up uh, molecule. And I chose here uh, hydrogen cyanide. So there's a hydrogen, a carbon, and a nitrogen, and the carbon's in the middle. And it's sort of, there are three bonds between the carbon and, and the nitrogen and one with the hydrogen, that doesn't matter, but they line up nicely. So it's a nice, I only have to worry about one axis here. And I'm gonna call that the X axis. And I looked up some values. I hope these are right. Here's the, here's the, link to uh, where I got the information. And they told me that the distance from the uh, hydrogen to the carbon um, was uh, this 115 and the distance to the uh, carbon to the hydrogen was this 106. And then I imagined that the carbon was in the middle. So that was the zero. So I'm doing here hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen. And so I said, here at zero is the carbon. And then I made the hydrogen negative because it's to the, I'm imagining it to the left and the nitrogen to the right. And so I have three masses and three positions of uh, hydrogen, carbon, uh, nitrogen. And I performed this uh, calculation. So I could do the sum of the masses times the positions divided by the sum of masses, or it could also do this weighted mean, again, the same thing. So I'm gonna, uh, let me sweep out my results from that student taking a uh, course. And I'm gonna hit uh, control L and clear out my console down there. And I'm gonna highlight all this stuff. And this, this is going to calculate where the center of mass is for this hydrogen cyanide and it is 0.056 and this is I think nanometers and that it makes sense that the carbon was in the middle but on one side is a little old hydrogen and on the other side is a nitrogen so it's going to be the center is going to be sort of on the on the nitrogen side which is what came about and then more complicated just for fun uh, let's do water, but water is now uh, more, it's not linear, it's more planar. So here's the water with the oxygen in the middle and the two hydrogens off at angles. And that angle between the hydrogens, I'm gonna say is 104.5, that's roughly right. And I'm gonna set it up in a coordinate system where 
you know, it's 104.5 divided by two. That's the angle from the upper hydrogen to the x-axis. And there's uh, the other hydrogen is below by the same amount. Okay. And then um, I can take the, the hydrogen. I'm going to take the oxygen as the origin. And so then the, the upper hydrogen is some distance d, which is about... Uh, I think um, 0.0958, I think, and that's in nanometers. So um, it's almost an angstrom. Um, but that is the distance between the, I guess, the center of the oxygen and the center of the hydrogen going along that diagonal. But I'm going to just worry about the x's. The y's by symmetry will cancel. So I don't have to worry about the y. The, the center of mass vertically will be that x axis. But, but where is the center horizontally? Um, that's what I want to figure out. And so the X component will be that distance D times the cosine of the angle. Then because we're doing some computer stuff, uh, computers in general don't like degrees, so we're gonna have to convert to radians. And so just a little bit of fun, but uh, so here we go. So the masses were the taking oxygen to be 16 and hydrogen to be one. Um, I'm taking the positions, the little C here is uh, the concatenate for R, so to set up a vector. So here's my mass vector 16, one, one, close enough. And then I took, and then this is my horizontal positions. I took my oxygen to be at the origin zero. Here is that value for D, 0 0.0958, and that's in, I think in nanometers. Um, I'm multiplying it by cosine to get the X component, 104.5 divided by two, that's the angle. And then I had to convert it to radian. So I just multiplied it by pi and divided it by 180. So just sort of by hand um, converting it, uh, the angle to radian. So when I take the cosine, it will work. If I don't, the cosine in like the most computer languages works in radian, so I have to do that conversion. And the other, the x uh, position, the x component of these two hydrogen are the same. So there's my oxygen, my hydrogen, upper hydrogen, my lower hydrogen. And then I just calculated uh, the weighted mean. So we know that it was multiply the masses times the positions and then divide by the masses. And uh, let's run that, run, run, run. And now uh, the center of mass is 0 0.0065. So it's close to the origin because it's, it's dominated by the oxygen, but the hydrogens pull it out a little bit from the center. And that, that's the calculation. I just wanted to show you this concept of, uh, oh, let me save. That red meant that had saved, now I've saved. So uh, R has this nice built-in concept of vector and it does vector multiplication and summing of vectors and so on. And, but this one particular uh, calculation of multiplying two vectors and dividing by the sum of one of, the, one of them is known as a weighted average or a weighted mean. And it's so important that they've built it into R. So that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for your attention.